Wonderful greetings everybody. Um, it is so wonderful to be in your company again and uh, I am Chris Klingsmith and you are tuned into Apostolic Touch and um, I am so glad that I can come and share with you again the word of the Lord and share with you the mind of the Lord and the speakers of God in, in the season and um, I'm just so delighted to be in your home, in your company, with your family, with your loved ones and maybe even if you are traveling or maybe you've downloaded the podcast and you're listening to this I'm just so happy that I'm able to take this moment and the next few minutes to encourage you and to motivate you in the things of the Lord. Before we get started, why don't you take a moment just to um, share the broadcast to your Facebook page and tag one or two or three people in the post and I'm sure it will be a blessing to them as much as it will be a blessing to you and me over the next few minutes. Now, um, I'm going to be sharing with us today and over the next few broadcasts um, again, I'm going to talk to you from my new book. A uh, new book is called The Prophetic Pursuit. And, um, and, and in this few sessions, I am going to talk to us about the, 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 the necessity to conform to your prophecy. The necessity to conform to that which the Lord has spoken over your life. And we are going to look at how Jonah was unable to conform to the spoken word of God and con uh, unable to conform to the requirements of God and how that was a real opening the door to great calamities in the life of Jonah. So it's going to be a, a real interesting time over the next few minutes. Uh, once again, invite someone, invite your family, get someone to join with you and I promise you it's going to be a real, real blessing in your life. My new book, it's called The Prophetic Pursuit. It's uh, available on multiple platforms now. It's available on Amazon. It's available on Google Books as well as at Macro Online. And of course, you can get a hold of uh, the books through our offices. We have it available in uh, paperback as well as in ebook form. So you can get a hold of that. Uh, and everything I'm going to be sharing over the next few weeks or the next few programs. Is going to come from a new book now if you if you have your Bibles with you let's uh, let's go to the first book of Timothy Timothy the Bible says first Timothy chapter 1 verse 18 says this charge um, I commit unto the um, son Timothy according to the prophecies which went before on thee and by them might us war a good warfare here we find out that um, uh, Apostle Paul is writing to Timothy as a father writes to to a son and he says to Timothy um, I commit unto you and I ask you uh, I, I commit unto you Timothy according to the prophecies that which went before thee that you must give yourself a good warfare now listen to this in the amplified version the Bible says this command I entrust to you Timothy my son in accordance with the prophecies previously made concerning you so that so that inspired and aided by them you might fight the good fight and in contending with the false teachers apostle paul writes to timothy and says timothy i want you to know that they, the prophecies that was made over your life i want you to pay uh, to pay a uh, memory to that i want you to be in memory of that which was spoken over your life I want you to pay, uh, pay the due diligence to the word of the Lord. And he says, this prophecy, that it will be inspired in you and it will aid you. That this prophecy will inspire you and it will aid you. And so here, it was prophesied over Timothy that he would be, have great gifts, that he would have great talents, that great uh, potential was going to be bestowed upon him and that he will be very useful and he will be very diligent and successful preacher um, in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and so your yeah, Apostle Paul mentions these to stimulate him to motivate him and to encourage Timothy about his prophetic word to motivate him to excite him and to the word says also to electrify him concerning the word of the Lord concerning the speakings of God I'm speaking to someone right now that have heard a prophetic word over their life that have heard the spoken word of God over their life and um, and I have experienced in my own life looking back from the age of 16 17 18 uh, many uh, occasions where I've heard and had 
the word of the Lord being spoken over my life. Let's take a minute just again to interpret what the word prophecy means. It means to have the mind of God spoken. It means the revelation of the purpose of God. It means the, the, the revelation of the mind of God, speaking the mind of God, speaking the purpose of God, speaking the will of God with clarity. Uh, it means that that you that the word of the Lord has been made known to you the plans of God has been made known to you so when we talk about the prophecy this is what we are talking about the revelation of God's word the revelation of God's plan the revelation of God's purpose for your life this is what we are talking about and here Paul says to Timothy that these prophecies were spoken over you let them motivate you let them excite you let them electrify you in my experience, I have learned that nothing motivates like a prophecy. Nothing motivates like the word of the Lord. When the word of the Lord comes into your life, when the spoken word of come upon you, when the spoken word of God comes into your life, it motivates you, it will excite you, it will electrify you, it will give you sight for the future, it will give you vision, it will give you hope, it will stir you on. When you hear the word of the Lord come upon your life, when you hear the word of the Lord being spoken over you, it will really electrify you and set you on fire for the purposes of the Lord. And so I pray um, over the next few weeks and over the next few sessions that as you hear the word of the Lord, that the Spirit of God will begin to put you in remembrance of what the Lord spoke over your life that the Spirit of God will begin to put you in remembrance and once again motivate you once again encourage you and motivate you and move you to your prophetic purpose nothing motivates like a glimpse of your future nothing motivates like that which God wants to accomplish nothing motivates like that which God uh, what God revealed about your tomorrow just imagine how excited Joseph was when the Lord revealed to him the purpose of God for his life. Just imagine the motivation that um, Abraham had when God revealed to him his future. When God said to him, you are now no longer, you are going to be the father of many nations. And the Bible says that Abraham was so motivated, he was so stirred on. That the Bible says Abraham lived in a tent for the remainder of his life because he looked for a city which had foundations whose builder and maker is God. Abraham was excited about the possibility uh, of being the father of many nations. And so I'm speaking to someone today that may have forgotten the prophetic word, that may have forgotten what God spoke about your life, that may have forgotten that which God has announced over you. But I want you to sit right there where you are and stop where you are right now and begin to think again on that which the Lord spoke. And when you think on it, let it motivate you. Let it stir you up. Let it encourage you. Let it, let it really just ignite in you. Let it just come like a fresh fire upon your life and stir you towards the purposes of God. The question upon many people's life is, many people's minds rather, is when am I, where am I going? What am I going to do? When am I going to accomplish this? Am I going to be successful? Do I have a future? And what kind of future is that? And Timothy lived with these prophecies engrafted in his life. These prophecies were engrafted in his spirit, was engrafted in his mind, and God gave him a glimpse of his future prophecy is God giving you a glimpse of your tomorrow prophecy is God giving you a glimpse of what your future will be like look what the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 the Lord said to Jeremiah before I formed you in the belly I knew you and before thou camest forth out of the womb I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations you see you enter your prophecy by confirming forming to that which God spoke over your life one of the things that you need to know is that you must begin to start the processes now of conforming to that which the Lord spoke over your life you must take the necessary steps now to conform to the spoken word of God to conform to the word of the Lord to conform 
to that which God has announced as you sat there, as you remembered the word of the Lord, as you remembered and reminisced on the speakings of God, as you sat there for a moment and just realized that God has a plan for your life and began to play the picture in your mind and began to play the picture in your heart. Imagine the Lord said to Abraham, look at the stars, that's how many children you are going to have. Look at the sands of the seas, that's how many sons and daughters you are going to have. The moment uh, Joseph closed his eyes, he saw the sun, the moon, the stars, the seas all bow down before him. And this was playing in his mind. And now that you have had the Lord just rekindle that in you, now you must begin to take the steps to begin to conform to that which the Lord placed in you. Begin to conform to the spoken word of God. Begin to conform to the word, the rhema of God. Begin to conform to the to the taba of God. Begin to conform, conform to the prophetic word upon your life. The word conform means to resemble. It means to possess. The word conform means to look like. The word, uh, the word conform means to look like your actions and your manner of life takes on another shape and form. i got to say that again to someone. When you conform, it means that your actions and your mannerisms and your manner of life takes on another shape and it takes on another form. This is what you and I have to do on this journey. When God spoke the word, God released the word. Now the Apostle Paul says to Timothy, it's time for you to begin to conform to that which God is speaking over your life. Apostle Paul is encouraging Timothy to act in all conformity, to act in all conformity to God's word. In other words, Timothy, it's time for you to begin to imitate the word of the Lord. It's time for you to mimic what God spoke over your life. It's time for you to begin to emulate the prophetic word that was released upon your life. Whatever that word may be, whatever that speaking may be, whatever the word of the Lord may be, it's time for you to begin to conform to it. It's time for you to begin to look like your prophecy. It's time for you to begin to mimic your prophecy. It's time for you to begin to emulate, begin to look like it, conform to what was spoken about you i don't know what was spoken about you i don't know what was announced over your life i don't know the details i don't know all the internal things i don't know what it is that what the lord spoke over your life but the lord sent me to tell you today that it's time for you to begin to look and imitate and look like your prophetic word whether that prophetic word was that you'll be a businessman, it's time to begin to move towards that. Whether that prophetic word is that God called you to be a preacher, it's time for you to move towards that. Whether that word of the Lord means, uh, spoke to you about uh, uh, coming into the ministry, it's begin to, you must begin to emulate that word. Whether that word, is, whatever it was, whatever it is that the Lord spoke over your life, it's time to conform and to look like that word. Begin to make the changes. Begin to make the adjustments. Begin to make the necessary uh, movements in your life. And begin to create the space in your life so that you can begin to conform to that which the Lord spoke of your life. When it comes to prophecies, you must look like where you are going. Can I say that again to someone? When it comes to prophecy, when it comes to the spoken word of the Lord, you must begin to look like where you are going. Come on now, someone. You must begin to look like your prophecy. You must begin to look like what it is that God has spoken over your life. You must begin to look like, resemble that. Begin to look like your prophecy. Whatever your prophecy may be, begin to move like your prophecy. Begin to think like your prophecy. Begin to speak like your prophecy. Begin to act like your prophecy. This is what is needed in your life. You need to begin to conform, transform, change from what it was 
to what God wants you to be from what you are to what God wants you to be maybe maybe right now I'm speaking to someone that says you know man of God it is very difficult for me to conform but I want you to know you can only conform by the power of God you can only conform by the speakings of God you can only conform when the grace of God comes upon you the Bible tells me the Bible tells me that God will give you the ability to conform. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 9 verse 6 to 7, the Bible says, When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground, and he made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And verse 7 says, And he said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. And he sent, and he went away. He went this way before, therefore, and washed and came seeing. This man was born blind. You and I both know that. He had never seen in his life. He had never, he had no vision in his life. He never had the ability to see. Maybe I'm speaking to someone right now that cannot see the prophetic word of God in, in, in his life right now. But God, over the next few minutes, God over the next few programs is going to release an anointing upon your life that's going to give you the ability to see what God has in store for you. And the Bible says Jesus spits on the ground and he makes clay and puts on this man's eyes. And Jesus says to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam. Go wash in the pool of Siloam. Don't stand here. Don't wait here. Don't camp out here. Don't become stagnant here. Don't become stationed here. Walk to the pool of Siloam. Are you following me this day? And this is what you need to do. You must become part of your prophecy. You must become, you must conform so much that you become part of the prophetic word upon your life. Jesus said to the man, go wash in the pool of Siloam. He had the clay on his eyes, the, 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 the ground mixed with spit. Jesus is spit, it's on his eyes. And maybe he thought he was going to see at that point in time. But Jesus says, now that the clay is on your eyes, don't wait here. Go to the pool of Siloam and go wash. And the Bible says this man walked and he became part of his prophecy. There's a journey that you must take. There's a journey of conformity. There's a journey of becoming like the word of the Lord. There's a journey in becoming what God spoke over your life. There's a journey that you must conform to that God said you must be. There's a journey that you must go. Everyone who ever fulfilled their prophecy became part of their prophecy. The widow at Zarephath, she became part of the prophecy. Elijah's prophecy about her being sustained. He, uh, the Bible source says the widow with the cruise of oil. Elijah prophesied over this woman and said, this is what God is going to do. Get the pots together, pour the oil in there. And the Bible says she became part of her prophecy. Everyone must become part of what the Lord spoke over the life. This man, the Bible says, he went his way, he washed and he came seeing again. This man went his way, he washed and he came seeing again. He went his way, no one was helping him to walk towards the, the, the pool of Silo. I got to stop there for a moment. There was no one, according to the scripture, no one came to help him to walk towards his prophetic uh, uh, fulfillment. No one showed him where the pool of Siloam was. No one guided, no one took him by the hand and said to him, let me take you there. No one took him by the hand and said to him, hey, come on, let me show you where the pool of Siloam is. This man walked by himself speaking to someone right now that is waiting on this one and waiting on the other one and waiting on this one in a different nation and waiting on this businessman and waiting on this person and waiting on this individual god says you have to walk your way by yourself that you can't delay your prophecy you can't delay the speakings of god you can't delay what god wants to do in your life on um, uh, on uh, because someone else didn't take your hand or someone else didn't respond to you or someone else didn't give to you or someone else didn't come and help you along the way your prophecy is up to you jesus said to this man now you walk you walk don't look for someone to come and help you don't look for someone to come and aid you you walk your way imagine how difficult it must have been for this man who was already blind who could not see and jesus now still puts clay on the man's eyes 
imagine that but the bible says this man walked towards the pool of siloam what was this man doing the, what this man was conforming to his prophecy this man was conforming the prophecy was go wash in the pool of siloam and you will receive your sight i'm speaking to someone today i'm speaking to someone that maybe like just that like just like this blind man the lord spoke to you the lord spoke to you the lord gave you a word the lord gave you instruction the lord revealed his plan the lord revealed his purpose and he told you now it's time to go but you have not moved towards the prophetic word you have not moved towards the purpose of god you have not moved to that which god told you to do i'm speaking to someone right now who the lord has put the clay on his eyes for the want of words and god said to you go wash in the pool of silo but you have not moved towards that. Interestingly, interestingly enough, the word, the word, the, the, the word, um, si, the, the pool of Siloam, uh, pool of Siloam is, is an apostolic dimension. It's the word saint. The word Siloam means, the word, a uh, pool of Siloam is the word saint. It's an apostolic dimension. And so when he says to him, go wash, that word wash, interesting, that word wash means to wash and keep on washing. That word wash means to wash, not just once, not just twice, not just three times, but when you wash, keep on washing. Keep on washing. Keep on putting, applying the water to your eyes. Keep on applying the water to your face. Keep on washing. Speaking to someone today that maybe walked towards and said, but the first wash, there was no revelation. With the first sprinkle, there was no revelation. But God says, keep on washing keep on doing keep on conforming keep on adjusting keep on moving forward keep on taking the shape of the word keep on taking the shape of the promise of god keep on taking the shape of that which the lord has announced over your life and the bible says your eyes will be made open your eyes will be made open and you will receive your sight it is the prayer of my heart this morning it's the prayer of my heart in this broadcast that as you hear the word of the lord that that there is just a shaking that takes place in your heart that there is just a quickening that takes place in your spirit a quickening that takes place in your heart and that the eyes of your understanding will be opened and will be revealed as you conform to that which god has released and spoken over your life i'm going to stop here it's been a great pleasure to be with you if you join us only now i'm talking to us from my new book it's called the prophetic pursuit and uh, we have released this book about uh, uh, just about a month ago now uh, just about a month ago we've released the book now and it has been doing very very well and i pray that as you listen to this message you are also able to get a copy of this book our details are running um, at the bottom of the screen our details are in there you can contact us you can order your copy from amazon you can order your copy from our offices of google books you can order your your, your copy um, also from uh, macro online it's available in ebook and it's available in paperback and i want to get this book into your hand get this message in your hand so that it can be a resource to help guide you to get you where god wants you to be i've been so delighted to be in your company i'm looking forward to come back again to the next opportunity because i'm going to continue sharing to us about how to conform to the speakings and the prophetic word of the lord upon your life god bless you god keep you god make his face shine upon you and i'm looking forward to see you again on the next opportunity bye bye everybody